Good morning, friends, and welcome to this morning worship. God has enabled us to come to the end of this month. And for the opportunity that he has given us to sit at his feet and to worship him with all our heart, mind, and spirit. As we prepare ourselves to worship God, let us invoke the presence of God so that he enables us to worship him with thanksgiving in our hearts. Let us pray. God, our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful morning in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for the love that surrounds us, for the joy that we share, and for the fellowship that we are about to enjoy. Father, we thank you for your hand which has brought us this far, your grace which never failed us in our journey throughout this month. Even as we worship you this morning, Lord, be with us and take us through the worship. Having learned a little more about you through the word, help us, O oh Lord, to go with confidence that your goodness and grace follow us. We commit all of us into your almighty hands and this time of worship. Bless us and let your Holy Spirit be present with us and let your name alone be glorified. We ask all this in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Let us now join in the singing of the hymn, There Shall Be Showers of Blessing.
friends having adored a train god let us all examine our own self for the word of god says if we say we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us if we confess god is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanses from all unrighteousness may we all humbly confess our sins our failures our weaknesses to almighty god let us all join in this prayer together oh god our father we have sinned against you in thought word and deed we have not loved you with all our heart we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves have mercy upon us we ask you cleanse us from our sins and help us to overcome our faults through jesus christ our lord amen may the almighty and merciful lord grant unto us pardon and remission of all our sins time for amendment of life and grace and comfort of the holy spirit amen let us listen to the scripture readings scripture reading taken from the books of acts of the apostles chapter 10 verses 16 and 19 and gospels of matthew chapter 13 verses 31 to 35 this happened three times and immediately the sheet was taken back to heaven while peter was wondering about the meaning of the vision the men sent by cornelius found out where simon's house was and stopped at the gate they called out asking if simon was known as peter was staying there while peter was still thinking about the vision the spirit said to him simon three men are looking for you the second reading from the gospel of matthew chapter 30 verses 31 to 35 he told them another parables the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed which a man took and planted in his field though it is the smallest of all seeds at when it grows it is the largest of garden plants and become a tree so that the birds come and perk in its branches he told them still another parable the kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about 60 pounds of flour until it worked all through the dough jesus spoke all these things to the crowd in parables he did not say anything to them without using a parable so was fulfilled what was spoken through the prophet i will open my mouth in parables i will utter things hidden since the creation of the world there ends the first reading dear friends greetings to you all in the matchless name of our lord and savior jesus christ this is the time of studying god's word and we have a very relevant topic given to us christian presence in multi faith society christian witness in multi faith society this theme becomes so close to each one of us because we are living in such a multi faith context in india we have so many religions and every religion has its own followers and christianity is also one among them and we christians belong to that religion but we have a special responsibility laid on us our presence 
makes a difference in this world. In a multi-faith society, each Christian is called to be a different and a unique witness. And in Matthew chapter 13, Jesus gives a number of parables explaining what the kingdom of God is all about. And he explains using very simple stories, simple parables, simple anecdotes in order to explain the truth about the kingdom of God. A parable is an earthly story to explain an heavenly meaning. So in Jesus' ministry we see many parables used by him during his preaching ministry and people were able to understand very easily the truth that he wanted to convey. So parables are always enough in the ministry of Jesus. They played important role in conveying the truth about God and all that we need to understand. Today, we are going to study two of such parables in Matthew chapter 13. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. That's one example of how Jesus wants to explain the great truth about the kingdom of God using a small mustard seed. He also told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into 60 pounds of flour until it worked until it worked all through the dove. So in one parable he uses mustard seed. In another parable he talks about the yeast. These two are our discussion today. Jesus spoke all these things to the crowd in parables and he did not say anything to them without using a parable. And he opened his mouth in parables. And he uttered things hidden through the little parables that he used. Now in order to consider our topic, Christian presence in multi-faith society, these two parables help us very much to understand and to explain our theme today. Mustard seed and yeast and what happens through these small uh, things that Jesus has mentioned is our study today. And there are three things that we can understand as we think about Christian presence in multi-faith society. First of all, Jesus speaks about the size of Christianity in this world the size he mentions, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. This is the smallest of all the seeds, but it does greater things. Therefore, the size in God's economy 
is something that we need to understand. What we consider small and insignificant, what we consider ordinary and simple, they become great in God's sight. And you can use small things, little things, to achieve greater goals. In the same way, yeast is also a little portion which is mixed into a larger portion of flour and it impacts the whole of the flour into which it is mixed. So it doesn't matter what the size is, but how God can use even little things to spread the news, to help the growth of the kingdom is something that we need to keep in mind. When you think about Christian population in our country, we are like mustard seed. We are like the little portion of the yeast. But God can use this insignificant, ordinary, little mustard seed like Christian presence to do wonders among others. There is no doubt that we are a small group and we are an ordinary people, poor existence, and we are a tiny little minority. But that is the way God wants it to be. Therefore, let us not worry about how much, how big we are. It is what the Lord wants you and I to be in the society. When Jesus asked his disciples, you are the light of the world, they understood what it means. A light is something that helps others to keep themselves away from darkness. But how much light is needed? There is only one stamp or only one post, light, light post, that helps the surrounding to get the light. In the same way, if Christian is called to be the light of the world, wherever he lives, wherever he is placed, he helps the surroundings, he helps the neighborhood and invites them to come into the light of Christ. That is what a Christian presence can do in the society which is full of darkness and evil. So, these things become very clear today. He needs only small and little things in order to achieve greater things. Because the one who is in us is greater than the one who is in the world. There is another example in the book of Judges, <coughs> chapter 7. Gideon had so many people with him. When, you, when he went to wage war against his enemies. But the Lord warned him, you have too many people with you. Ask them to go away. Reduce your army. I do not need too many people. Therefore, he kept sending all the people away. Finally, only 300 people remained. And with 300, the Lord was able to provide a great victory to Gideon. Judges chapter 7, this is the word that we read. The Lord said to Gideon, 
you have too many men i cannot deliver median into their hands or israel would boast against me my own strength has saved me therefore in order to teach a lesson to the people of israel the lord wants only small group of people with whom he can deliver the whole israel from the hands of the medianites in the same way a christian or christian community although it is small an insignificant minority in the society this is the way the lord has called us to be and you can do greater things using a mustard seed and yeast which represent our existence today in this world so let us not worry about the size in which we have been placed the size is not important but the savior who will use the ordinary the insignificant and the small things he is important secondly in this parable jesus mentions about the silence the silent witness of the mustard seed and the secret impact of the yeast this is what we are called to be today we need not boast about what we are doing we need not make a propaganda about what we can do everything should be done in silence the impact of silence is really felt when we wait upon the lord and permit him to do his best in our daily life in this parable we see that impact a small mustard seed later grows into a large tree and it becomes a shelter for many many birds who can which can come and rest on the tree this is how the kingdom of god grows the growth may be slow but the result will be greater in the same way yeast influences the rest of the flower in which it is mixed and this is done secretly and in silence and without any propaganda when the lord says you are the salt of the world every christian is called to be a silent witness a silent impactor a silent taste giver of the society the salt never boasts about the taste and the flavor that it gives wherever it is used but silently it influences it impacts whatever is the quantity in which it is mixed so you are the salt of the earth that is where you are called to be a silent impact in the society a silent witness so yeast is like compared to yeast is compared to the growth of the kingdom of god and the silent impact and the silent influence later becomes a result which everyone will appreciate it is a slow impact 
a slow growth, but it is result-oriented growth. And we all have the same part of ministry in our society today. Another example can be given about how we can be silent impact in the society in which we live. In a well, you drop a big stone in the middle of the water, in the middle of the well. When you drop the stone, you see a small ripple around the stone. And then if you watch, you will see the ripples spreading all over the world. It spreads. And each time there is a bigger ripple than the previous one. And the ripples continue till it reaches the edge of the wall of the well. So a Christian is now put into this world in order to make impacts around him. And the ripples can grow, your influence can grow, your impacts can grow till you reach the goal that is set before you. So size is one thing that a Christian needs to understand. And silence is another thing which is important for our ministry. Thirdly and finally, a Christian is called to do service. Service is most important of all the other things. Matthew chapter 5, 16 says, Let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Let your light shine. This is the service that we are called to do. We don't do service merely by words, but through actions. Because Jesus went around not only preaching, but doing good wherever he went. So Christian presence is a serving presence. In Acts chapter 30, verse, sorry, Acts 10, 38, there is a testimony about Jesus. There we see how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. God was with him. God has anointed him. He was full of the Holy Spirit and power. Therefore, he went around doing good and healing everyone. This is the service a Christian is called to do. Whatever you do for Christ, will last forever. The service that you do for others will last forever and that will be a testimony for the glory of God. We have known many missionaries who came to our place and who served God by serving people, by serving the oppressed and by serving the sick and the deceased Mother Teresa could not be forgotten in that line. She still remains a model for how a Christian presence can be a blessing to the society through the service that we do. It was John Wesley who made this statement very clear. Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, 
in all the places you can at all the times you can to all the people you can as long as ever you can so you must be in service always all the time as long as you can so this is our calling if only every christian is able to understand the purpose behind his existence in this world he will only serve others because we only derive this model from our lord jesus christ who said i came not to be served but to serve if people want to see christ today where can they see christ they have to see the serving christ the helping christ the healing christ the supporting christ in you and me a christian presence is the presence of christ himself therefore we are mini christ and we are mobile christ we can say we are on the movement we are moving like christ here and there and in and through us christ should be revealed not only through our words through our preaching but through our through the action that we do through our light that we shine through the help that we extend through our own lives christ should be revealed and we are a mini christ every christian is a mini christ and every christian needs to be a mobile christ showing the true love of god the true love of christ wherever we go and in whatever we do christ's love should be revealed i want to complete this morning devotion with a little story a missionary was met by a hindu friend who asked what do you put on your face which makes you shine always there is something that you apply to make your face to shine and glow and the missionary politely replied we don't put on anything but of the hindu friend kept on asking him no you must tell me what do you put on your face that makes you shine always there is always a glow on your face a shine on your face what do you put on then the missionary understood what he was talking about and he replied it is not something that we put on from outside but it's something that we have inside that makes our face shine we have the light of christ inside and we shine outside let your light so shine before others seeing your good works they may praise the father in heaven a christian presence in the society is so designed by god that there is a size and there is silence which leads to service to the people and thus every christian becomes a mini christ and a mobile mobile christ may these words continue to remain in our hearts as we continue to serve god and his people in the days to come god bless you all amen let us all join in affirming our faith and let us affirm our faith in the words of the apostles creed i believe in god the father almighty maker of heaven and earth and in jesus christ his only son our lord 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, good morning once again, and greetings to you all. On behalf of the pastors, we wish you a happy day, and we hope that you are all fine by the grace of God. And it is time as one family of God to wish our friends and families happy birthday and happy anniversary. Sunday the 30th, Mr. Sterling James. Monday 31st, Mrs. B. Cherian, Mrs. Annie Vijayan, Ms. Augusta Grace, Mr. Ashwin Cherian, Ms. Rebecca Theophilus, Ms. Francis, Mr. Daniel Alfred Vishwasam, Right Reverend Dr. V. Devasagayam, Mrs. Shobha Rebecca Sizil, Mrs. Shobhana Satish Pragal Singh, Mr. L. Samuel Baskaran. Tuesday, September the 1st, Ms. Sharon Vinita, Ms. Sangeeta Daniel, Ms. Navanita Daniel, Mr. Paul Sudhakar, Mr. John Matthew, L. Taran Daniel Paul, Mr. R. Satyamurthy, Ms. Esther Burby, Ms. Rachel Ebenezer, Ms. Shilpa Grace Samuel. Wednesday, the second, Mr. D. Paul Raj, Ms. Shobha Rajkumar, Ms. Deborah Hall, Mrs. A.J. Martha Merolin, Ritika Sarah Jaisilan, Stephen Lazarus Joseph, Mrs. Stella Abraham. Thursday, the third, Dr. Rajan Santosham, Mrs. Christabel J. David, Mrs. Amrita Frederick, Emmanuel Vijay Kumar. Friday, the fourth, Mrs. Christine Moses, Mrs. Tangam Philip, Mr. Satish Samuel, Mrs. Omana Thomas, Joshua Amos, Mrs. Anna S. Turner, Mrs. Hazel Bangara. Saturday, the 5th, Mrs. Ramona Moses, Mrs. Pondrani Abraham, Mr. Vijay Gina, Ms. Lena Hazel Das, Mr. William Mark De Silva. Families who celebrate the wedding anniversary. Monday the 31st, Dr. and Dr. Benny Emmanuel, Mrs. and Mr. J. Selva Kumar. Tuesday, September the 1st, Mrs. and Mr. F. Rehman, Mrs. and Mr. S. Vivina Ratanaraj. Wednesday, 2nd, Mrs. and Mr. George Inbasegar, Mrs. and Mr. Denzel Thomas. Thursday, the 3rd, Dr. and Dr. C.V.S. David, Mrs. and Mr. Rajiv Chaladurai, Mrs. and Mr. S. Rajendran, Mrs. and Mr. David Tyagaraj. Friday, the 4th, Mrs. and Mr. P. Prem Kumar and Dr. and Dr. Chandran Abraham. We want to wish you all, those friends celebrating your birthday, God's blessings upon each one of you. God has been good to you and has brought you to this day safe. And may he be your shepherd as he continues to journey ahead with you, giving you all happiness and the peace from above. We also want to wish all families happy anniversary. God has been gracious 
and helped you to keep the covenant that you made together on the day he united and has carried you this far. The man who fears the Lord shall be blessed. Thus were you blessed and may his blessings continue as you journey forward together in your life. Bands of marriage. We publish the bands of marriage between Sanjay Craig Gina, son of Mr. B. G. John and Mrs. Linda Christine Gina, members of St. George's Cathedral, Diocese of Madras. And I, Maria Laurencia Priyanka, daughter of Mr. Ignatius and Mrs. Nirmala Ignatius, members of CSI Zion Church, Diocese of Madras. This is the first time of publishing. We publish the bands of marriage between Titus Emmanuel, son of Mr. Balachandra Pandian, and Mrs. Beulah Emmanuel, members of Emmanuel Methodist Church, Viperi, and Nina Tabitha Simon, daughter of Colonel Anil C. Simon, and Mrs. Susan Simon, members of St. George's Cathedral, Diocese of Madras. This is the second time of publishing. We published the bands of marriage between Nijit Bristow Solomon, son of Mr. S.R. George Joseph Durai, and Mrs. Beulah Rani, members of CSI Christ Church, Fort Pastrate, Tirchi Tanjavur Diocese. And Nitya A. Jasper, daughter of Mr. P. Velladurai and Mrs. R. Victoria, members of CSI Arul Church, Madhavaram Pastrate, Diocese of Madras. This is the third time of publishing. Friends, if any of you know any just cause as why these persons should not be joined together in the holy matrimony, you are to declare it in writing to the presbyter in charge of this congregation. Wish our friends and families happy birthday and happy anniversary. Let us now join together and sing the hymn, Lord, the light of your love is shining.
our gracious god heavenly father thank you lord for this time of worship we are able to sit in your presence examine ourselves listen to your voice and make a surrender of our lives to you thank you lord for the message that comes to us this morning to shine before others and to make a meaningful existence of our life in this world as we try to do that we are weak and fragile in ourselves but with your strength we can do all things help us lord to continue to be the light of the world and to be the salt of the earth wherever we are lord we pray for the thanksgiving service that we have arranged on the 5th of september in our parish hall let that day be a great occasion for each one of us for each family in our church to realize how good you have been to them and to repay through their thanksgiving the blessings that you have showered upon them bring your people with a thanksgiving attitude with a thanksgiving mind and a thanksgiving spirit for all that you have done let your presence stay with us throughout that day to strengthen us to encourage us to support us and to make us more meaningful witnesses for you lord be with us lord as we prepare for this thanksgiving day in our life we pray now for those who celebrate birthday during this week bless them and keep them we also pray for those who celebrate the families that celebrate wedding anniversary bless them abundantly with your grace and favor provide them with all that you have in store for them and we also pray that the bands we have published may be blessed by you and we pray that the children whom you have chosen to be united may be blessed by you and their family be a place where you can dwell and bless the family life in the days to come lord we pray and commit our lives to you let everyone's witness be acknowledged in your presence as we gather together to worship you and to give you thanks and we once again commit ourselves to you lord guide us throughout this day and we once again thank you for the new month that you are giving us continue to go before us we will follow your footstep lead us in the way that we should go provide us with green pastures and lead us beside still waters help us lord with everything that we may need in order to serve you and to serve your people let our existence in this world become meaningful and a blessed one for others we give all glory and honor unto your holy name and in jesus name we humbly pray amen let's now join in the lord's prayer together our father in heaven holy be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil 
for yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the grace of God uphold you, the peace of God surround you, the love of God flow from you, and the strength of God protect you and bring you safely day by day. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Peace of God be with you all. Amen.